Thoughts and Hypothesis, brought to you by Thomas Willoughby and Todd Martin, who are a superior more. Edward Sapir was an anthropologist linguist, professor, and developed the fundamental ideas that would evolve into the theory. Benjamin Lee Worth was a student of Sapir and took the ideas radically further. The basis of the theory is that the language of a speaker determines or influences how they think and perceive the world. It comes in two forms, the strong and weak where the strong form language determines thought and the weak form language influences but does not determine thought and perception entirely. How the theory is viewed today, the superior wharf is today considered to be false in the strong form, however there is agreement by some that it could hold in the weak form. Our proposal, since the theory has a general consensus to be mostly false, we have decided to play the contrarians and present on evidence that supports the hypothesis. Upcoming on our video, Thomas will talk about Hopi and other native languages, and I will be presenting on grammatical gender and the Russian color experiment. Experiment. The Russian language does not have a universal word for all colors that match what English speakers would consider blue. The Russian language makes a clear distinction between light blue and dark blue by using different words. These words are, in fact, treated like basic colors. In English, it would be like treating blue to red. Details on the experiment. Russian speakers were sitting in front of a screen that displayed three different colors in full view until the speaker responded by pushing a button. The data that was taken was based on the answer the speaker gave and the response time to declare an answer. The answer was which of the two bottom squares was or most resembled the color of the top square. This data was then compared to the data of English speakers who took the same test. Russian speakers showed to have a faster reaction time distinguishing between light blue and dark blue than English speakers. English speakers had faster reaction times when identifying shades of blue when all choices came from either the light blue category or the dark blue category. Both groups of the same accuracy in their answers. So what does this mean? In the superior war sense, the stricter boundaries in the Russian language give an upper hand to distinguishing between different linguistic categories, but a disadvantage when trying to make distinctions within the same linguistic category. A language such as English has the upper advantage in distinguishing between different inputs that fall within a broader linguistic category. Grammatical Peer Worth Hypothesis An experiment was conducted on Russian speakers. The Russian speakers were asked to identify weekdays as a person. Weekdays that were grammatically masculine were imagined to be male. Weekdays that were feminine were imagined to be female. This could also carry over into other languages that assign masculine or feminine connotations to words in grammar. German and Spanish Descriptors an experiment was conducted on speakers who were either native German or Spanish speakers and were also able to speak English. Both sets of speakers were asked to describe characteristics of objects. One object was bridge. In German it takes the feminine form and common descriptors that were given was elegant, fragile, beautiful, and slender. While in Spanish it takes the masculine form and the common descriptors were strong, dangerous, and sturdy. Another object that they had to describe was key. In German it takes the masculine form, and the common descriptors were heavy, metal, hard, and useful. While in Spanish it takes the feminine form, and the common descriptors for that were intricate, lovely, little, and golden. Conclusion of the experiment. The grammatical mechanics of words on objects affect the view a speaker has on an object. Spanish speakers and German speakers know what a bridge is, however they have different feelings about them that can stem from the gender assigned to their words in the languages. Thank you, Todd. As we continue down the road of confirming the superior worth hypothesis, I sought to research the Hopi further. My dear mother, who passed away two and a half years ago, had just a little Hopi in her lineage. I recently acquired this Hopi hunter kachina basket as a memento and memoriam to my mom. I also recently obtained this old copy for, of Hopi Time by Eckhart Malachi, published back in 1983, and I got it through the Arizona State University Library System very quickly. 
Malachi was quite critical of Worf throughout this work, arguing that Worf was empirically wrong, but it became evident that Malachi was being somewhat overly critical of Worf as we discovered that Worf changed his theories and mindset over time on the Hopi language. Ultimately, Worf described a future tense that the Hopi use in their language, thus supporting that there is an acknowledgement of time. Benjamin Worf was a quite interesting man. He was a chemical engineer by trade, a businessman, and a keen study of language and thought. He only lived to be 44 and passed away in 1941, quite accomplished for having lived a relatively short life. In 1958, John Carroll conducted an experiment on the Navajo reservation with Navajo-speaking and English-speaking children. The experiment was designed to prove his hypothesis of positive correlation of shape and color in Navajo and did indeed render those results. My research then took me to Penny Lee, who in 1991 argued in support of Worf's Hopi tensors as being subtle articulators in a language thought nexus. In 2012, Stephen Levinson authored the foreword to the second edition of The Language Thought and Reality Selected Writings of Benjamin Lee Worf, published by MIT Press in 2012. This foreword spoke to much of what I've just presented. Thank you. In conclusion, the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis has been a source of contentious academic argument and research over the years, but there are still instances as we have shown through our research for how languages learn and use to this day. Whether Russian in colors, Hopi in time, or Navajo with shape and color, there is research and test results to trace acknowledgement and distinction in verbs and modifiers to language and thought. A special thanks to Todd Martin and to you, Professor Asafa, for making SLC 201 so much fun in learning about